Hello, I hope you've had a great week and still coping with the current lockdown. I read uh, somewhere on social media that the word prayer has been entered into Google over the past few weeks more than ever before. And at times like this, it's perhaps understandable as we look for hope in these challenging times. But I wonder where you are on hope at the moment and how you are managing to maintain it in the continuing lockdown. Many of us have placed our hope in other things other than Jesus. We've placed our hope in marriage, careers, wealth, health, engagements, academia, sports, and then usually at some point they come crushing down around us and we wonder, what was the point? Why did I bother? What's it all about? But what is hope? Hope is something that we place our confidence in. Hope is something that we believe has a future and so therefore we invest time and energy into it. We feel hopelessness when we realise that what we had invested in will not come through for us and it will not give us what we thought we were getting. From the day we were born, we have always placed our hope in something, whether it was our parents or something else. And then at various points along our growing up, our development, we moved and placed our hope into other things. Hope in many ways is like a ladder that we lean against, something we trust it to support our dreams, our security and our future. We don't think about it until it starts to get all wobbly and insecure and we no longer feel safe. Hope starts to evaporate and we began to feel hopeless and grasp at straws or anything to make us feel better. And often the older we get, the more prone we are to leaning our ladders against people and things that promise financial and emotional security. Tragically, the leading reasons behind suicide is a lack of relational and financial security. The good news though, is that throughout scripture, we are told to place our hope in God and God alone. It is the only way that you can maintain hope in the broken world that we live in. And you might be one of those people who are hesitant to do this because you're not convinced that the world is broken. We believe that we are the ones that can lead ourselves either through exercise, drugs, surgery, education, finance, a good job, to a place where we're untouchable. We believe that we're so untouchable, so in control, that we lean our ladders there and we convince ourselves that it will always stay there because we have placed it there until it doesn't. The world is more broken than we realise or perhaps have personally experienced. Even if you've not felt broken before, even if the impact of this virus does not come close to you, you may accept that there is poverty, malnutrition, unjust wars, division and other human created forms of pain in the world and that these have had a huge impact on other humans and therefore create brokenness. And we might deny these things when they do start coming close to us and affecting us personally, but they are there, creating a world that can be so painful to live in, we try anything, sometimes with devastating effects, in a desperate stab at finding hope again. And all of us at some point look for a way of how to cope how to manage, how to once again have hope when all else fails. So if you are one of those people looking at prayer and Jesus, whether coming back to it or for the first time as the coronavirus has gripped the world, you're not alone and it's understandable. The wall that you lent your lad on or for your life has gone or it's crumbling and there is nothing more scary than the feeling of hopelessness. The Bible addresses this feeling and tells us of how we can cope in many ways. And perhaps the clearest way is in Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 31, which we'll focus on in a moment. And it's where Paul gives us a great example and some good insight. 
Paul has written this letter when Nero was controlling the Roman Empire. It was not a great time to be alive. Occupation, corruption, torture, injustice are just a few examples of the culture that existed then. So it was a time when people were also looking for hope. And to paraphrase Romans 8, Paul reminds us of the narrative of the creation story and how our disobedience and disbelief in God meant that sin, brokenness came into the world. And we often think of sin or our sin as an isolated incident, only affecting us and not the repercussions that might come out of it for other people. Sin is in fact a brokenness, a disease, a virus if you like, that once introduced into the world, once created, goes on and on until it infects everything. Anything that has life, be it nature or people, will one day die. That is a fact. And anything that has life is open to disease. Add in sin, brokenness, human damage, climate change, coronavirus or whatever, and the process is speeded up. And God is allowing it to run its course. We might try and slow it down, but God is allowing this decay and disruption to run its course for now. Because one day, a day will come when we are set free from all death and decay. To interfere, for God to interfere would be controlling and we are not puppets to be controlled. We have free will and that also involves freedom to treat our planet and ourselves as we choose. The groaning of the whole earth will one day end and God's full glory and promises will be realised. So attaching our hope to anything of the world is hopeless because it will one day decay and disappear. That's why those of you who like to be in control get so frustrated. The world doesn't cooperate with you. Things break, people misbehave, your children aren't interested in your plans for their lives. Holiday this year have got cancelled, plans have changed, money's been lost, dreams are dashed. Because none of these things are made in stone or eternal. We're all looking for something beyond the presence and effects of our sin, of our brokenness, of our decay and ultimately of death. In verse 23, it refers to us having knowledge of the future glory, of what is to come. And in some ways, we're all yearning for that, wanting our ladder to be leaning on certainty now. How can we know what it is? How can we yearn for something when we don't know what it is? But we do know, but not all of us have found it. And it's spelt H-O-P-E, or in another language, J-E-S-U-S. -S. In the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, we read of God's promise to a place of peace, to a place where God has put himself inside of us, in our hearts, his instructions so that we will know him. Deep inside all of us, we know God's plans. We know what the world as it is now is not how it's meant to be. This world is not God's design. It's humans. And with all our greed and overconsumption, we have an indescribable knowledge of what the world will look like one day when God claims it back. And we yearn for it now. Inbuilt into us is a sense of justice, right from wrong, because God Put it there. He is the source of our hope and we long for it to be realised now. Our lives are tied to a stronger, bigger story than our own lives and it's bigger than this life and it's way bigger than this current corona disaster. We become Christians knowing that this life wasn't what it was all about, that there was something else and something better is yet to come and we want to be part of it. We want the benefits it has to offer. And as Paul says in verse 24, it is to this hope we are saved. We lean into this future hope. Paul encourages us to wait patiently, to not give up hoping because God is also at work now at this time. When we find ourselves frustrated, confused, perplexed, God understands and he hears our prayers. And even when our prayers are just groans of frustration, of mourning and of agony, he hears us and he says, yes, join the club. This world is not what I wanted either. 
This is not how it was meant to be. And people often ask, why is there suffering in the world? As though God created it as part of creation. But it was humans that introduced suffering. We are the ones that crave knowledge, greed, that then creates poverty and injustice. We are the ones disrespecting animals and nature so that we end up with climate change and diseases like this virus affecting our daily lives. Until we connect with God's intention for the world, while we seek to fill our own internal desires and not his, we continue to allow suffering in the world. But the great thing, the thing that gives us crazy Christians hope is that what we have created, what we live in now is not the end. This is not where the story ends with a big apocalypse and zombies walking everywhere. God continues to love us craze for us, gets our attention so that we might get with his programme, that we might understand his plans and will for the world and join him in bringing it about. In fact, we are assured, we are assured that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, not even a virus or other disease, neither boredom nor loneliness, neither social distancing or reduced working hours, neither the threat of insolvency or the draining homeschooling, neither lack of toilet paper nor fake news or social media, great crises or anxiety, doubt nor even death will keep us from the love of God. That was taken from an Andy Y social media post this week and I thought it was a fantastic up-to-date paraphrase of Romans 8. When we put our hope, our ladder, on the things of God, nothing is going to come in between you and him to make it fall away. If we want certainty and something that will stand the test of time, if we want to see certainty demonstrated, then we only need to look to the cross where Jesus died for us and secured a place in the, in the eternal family for all of us. Everyone is welcome to be a part of what God is doing in his kingdom. And it's great that we feel this, this yearning for all things to be made well. And it's great to have our hope in things eternal. But how does that help us get through the now times, the time from now to then? And of course, for some, time seems much slower now than before. Well we do what the saints who went before us did. We love one another even though it doesn't always make a difference. We put others first even though it seems like it doesn't make a difference. We serve. We do our best no matter what. So does this then mean that it's okay to make dreams and to have plans? Well yes of course but we don't put our hope in these things. We hold it all with open hands and say these things are temporary. Only God's love is eternal. And when we loosen the grips from around our plans, our treasures and our ambitions, these things then loosen their grips from around our hearts and we can move our ladders to lean on the right things. It is at these times we discover what our hope is leaning on. So my question for you today is, what or whom are you hoping in that determines your ability to maintain hope in a broken world? God invites you today to lean your hope, your ladder against God's unending, unconditional love for you. As Psalm 33 says, may your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. My friends, think carefully what you lean your ladder up against in these days and choose wisely. And I'm here if you've got any questions at all. God bless you all. Do get in touch if you would like to take some talk some more or to take some next steps in your faith journey. Stay safe, stay in and go in peace.